Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to Mouse Reacts. Try... Tonight, yeah, we're gonna try a little something different. Um, trying to modify my voice without having to just do it myself. Um, a little bit closer to what I had to do with Malice, and, uh, I hope it doesn't bother you. If it does, uh, you can stop it and just use my natural voice again. Um, but with that said, um, hopefully it doesn't interfere from the reaction, and speaking of which, Paranormal Files tonight, and we are at the Goldfield School. We have previously seen a uh, twin paranormal here, and we'll see what the uh, Paranormal Files crew can find. So let's have a look. Without further ado, check out the links down below, and I'll probably advertise again later when they do. And let's begin. Goldfield. The scariest place in Nevada. The Devil's School. Horrifying paranormal activity caught on camera. Go. Welcome to the Goldfield High School. Wow. Can you open that door for us so we can come in? <laughs> Let's go uh, on inside okay. and we'll see what we can see inside. Oh, this is the closest they're ever getting to that building again. It's time to go back to oh. school, baby. Do it! The owner doesn't even want to get near it. Ah! Oh! The noise was me. No! We know that you're with us right now. <laughs> My name is Dr. Spooky. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, oh, Dr. Spooky. Hello? What the f was that? My name is Malice. So join us tonight as we go back to school here in the middle of Nevada. This is a scary also, building. We've already heard noises in really here. This is a, you, I mean, I'm just really excited to do this episode because of the Nothing history with this channel. So I'm Colin Brown and you're watching me blowing Paranormal my Files. Microphone. So the Goldfield High School. So for years I've wanted to film at the Goldfield Hotel. It's obviously a very notorious place in the paranormal world. We decided to try something different, to go somewhere where people don't really investigate because I feel like with these bigger locations sometimes they get overdone and the spirits get tired of communicating. That's why we chose that yeah. night to not investigate the hotel, but to investigate the old Goldfield High School. Obviously high schools are a place with a lot of energy, with kids coming through, kids passing away when they're out of school in accidents. I know that happened in my class in high school with a couple of kids, so mm -hmm. there's always so much energy surrounding high school. And Not the Goldfield High School ended up being one of the most haunted buildings we've stepped foot in this year. Be prepared because sure this video is at least is three or four of them along the way. So I mean, I've never investigated a high school that's before. In the time um, in high I was school. really curious as to see what kind of energies we would uh, be able to get from there, uh, because I mean, there was a lot of kids that went to school there. Um, definitely, at least you would get a residual energy feeling, because I mean, for sure, at least from residual our energy just we left don't know there, if yeah. anybody actually died in the in the high school, but. I mean, when you have so many people going through a place, definitely there's going to be energy left behind by it. So I was excited. So I actually started my paranormal journey at a high school, at my high school. If you want to watch that investigation, it's the mm. very first video on this YouTube channel. Some of the clearest activity I've ever recorded still to this day. But my theory back then was that high schools really, uh, become haunted because kids who go through them are oftentimes suffering with Tons of mental health problems. They're getting bullied. They have anxiety, depression. Kids take their lives. Kids die in accidents. And I feel like this energy creates two distinct entities that have consciousness inside of high schools. There's the good, the fun-loving spirit of children's energy, laughing, having fun with their friends, you know, doing homework and learning. Then there's the bad. There's the manifestation of all that energy, that depression, that darkness that just compounds over time to create something that's there that's f***ed up. And we, we interacted with that thing that night. Both of the things. You're going to see in this video, the duality. There's good and there's bad. But before we even got to the high school, while well, Connor and I were driving from like Tonopah all path, the way out to Goldfield, we passed by a small abandoned town on the side of the road, and we decided we had to stop by to to check it out, just live life for a second. Something really interesting about driving around Nevada and California is it's also crazy to think like, and it's creepy out here. I mean, look at the mountains. 
I mean, there's nothing out here. First. Yeah, we're really kind of like out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Just planted out in the middle there's of nowhere. It looks like. How did this even get here? I love moments like this. Like, when are you ever out in the middle of the desert in Nevada, in a ghost town, just walking around? I hope not often. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but it definitely makes you appreciate life a little more. Crazy how history, too, you know, just goes away over time if you don't work to preserve it. Seriously. Who knows, 20 years from now, this will probably just be Earth. Slabs. The cement Interesting slabs Interesting, though, in that about tonight 20, we're filming years. an old abandoned building, and we pass by all these abandoned buildings. Gotta take a second sometimes and just look. Kill time, not people. Fair enough. Da -da 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 -da. Yeehaw! Come on, baby! Woo -wee! Woo -wee! We are here in Goldfield, Nevada today. I'm the old prospect. <laughs> Where's the gold? This town is really famous for its paranormal activity. The amount of haunted places that we're, we're here. We're investigating a type of building we usually don't investigate here on the channel tonight. First, before we go the to that building, Connor, why don't you pan over Big there? To, that, my friends, is the Goldfield Hotel. That is the building that started off Ghost Adventures. It's where they filmed their very first documentary. Supposedly one of the most haunted places in the state of oh, Nevada. To hotel, potentially yep. all of America. Now, how cool is that? Pretty damn spooky, if you ask me. Yeah, we'll have to come back and do that location another time. But today's place is still just into. as creepy and cool. So, my friends, we're here a little bit early today, shockingly. Welcome to the Goldfield High School. Wow. Holy f Look at that place. Everything in Goldfield is rustic. That is massive, dude. So the Goldfield oh, yeah. High School is known place. to be a very, very haunted place. It's very fucking creepy. Yeah, looks like it's it. It's very fucking creepy. I've heard from the owners today uh, that they were experiencing already, just today in the daylight, paranormal activity inside of the building. So <sighs> looks like we might have our work cut out for us today. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Want to head inside? Let's do it. Okay, man. <laughs> All right, so people who manage the place actually aren't here yet. So before we do this tonight, we're actually gonna step inside of the building really quickly. <laughs> it's a little eerie, what the fuck? I watched that. We're gonna see if we can hear anything. Introduce ourselves. Can you open that door for us so we can come in? <laughs> oh. Not sure if that's for real or just the wind. Oh, that's getting stronger. <laughs> Let's see if it does it all the time. It's a little eerie. I'll give you that. But there's also a pretty good wind well, going through there. That's, I, I saw, would consider so. that an open invitation. Thanks, so. huh? More or less. This is crazy, dude. Um. What? What the fuck is that? <sighs> that door is so eerie, man. Yeah. It's got those. I still think it's the wind, but yeah, that thing's intense already. <laughs> God. Rick me. To anybody here in the building, class is in session. I heard steps. I swear I heard steps already. Damn, this building is crazy. Is there anybody here with us right now? That door again? What the fuck was that? I think it was that door, but. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that was close. Jesus Christ, dude. Wow, this, it's daylight in this Look, place. It's super active, it feels like. The There's lots of weird noises, here, that's for dang sure. And looking out over the mines. All the mine shafts and I mean like look at the beautiful view. It really is. It's a beautiful Lovely. building. Oh yeah, look at that. Mountains and everything. I wonder what the history is though. They see things in here all the time. They hear things. Even skeptics have come to this school and been turned into believers. So much so that they had to get out of here. They, they didn't want to stay in here. <laughs> Paranormal I can investigators leaving gear inside of the building. Apparently, they visited they did twice. Uh, I only saw the second time so far. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a I think dope be a spot. Good one. It's going to be a tense one. Yeah, let's ask one more it's time already being pretty in. weird. If there is anybody here with us right now, we're going to be coming back this evening to spend the night here. Can you make a noise and let us know what rooms we should investigate in? Come talk to you in? Just the whole building. It is. This <laughs> building's like f***ing alive right now. All right, y'all. So we figured we'd just come in and take a look in the daytime. And wow, it's already Haunted. It's already spooky. Soinks. He's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Roro -ro Raggy. Like <Lights> you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. So we first met with one of the guys who manages the location and he had some pretty wild yeah, I stories. I think in some of that was the door, but not things all that happened inside of the building. Famous people that graduated from the I mean, high school. It could be the wind, but and yeah, some mm, of his ghost stories are terrifying. He even told like us that just movement. that day, the spiritual activity was almost stronger than it's ever been before. So check this out. Good day. My name is Steve Phelps. I'm in Goldfield, Nevada, and we are going to go through the old uh, 1908 high school. Uh, that's been uh, abandoned since about 1948. Uh, it's in the process of renovation. Uh, we're more trying to rescue it, keep it from falling down, than we are to make it into a usable building. But just by way of history, we are standing here by the building. You can see there is new stonework. The windows are still missing. Uh, that's a project in the works right now. But if you were to stand here 20 years ago, you'd be able to look and see the classrooms. The wall had completely fallen out. The building was on its way oh, uh, this way. The building was purchased by the Historical Society. The president of the Historical Society is a retired engineer. A bit. He began writing grants and got enough money to get the wall built back up uh, and get the, the, the building saved. And it's a work in progress. We now are working on getting the roof completed so it no longer uh, collects water inside. Other projects include uh, getting windows done. If you were to stand here two years ago, every single window is boarded up. And now there are about mm. 40 windows that actually have glass in them and open and close. Um, the front stairway is new. Uh, so it's a work in progress. Anyway, let's go uh, on inside bit and we'll bit. see what we can see inside. Getting that roof on is going to be uh, a little bit windy. Lifesaver. Might be a little noisy. A little more Turn money your volume up on your player you and fix. let's see what we can hear. So two years ago, there was 40 less windows here. Yes. That's crazy. That's yeah, a two lot years ago, two there years. were no windows at all. Really? They were all boarded up. That's, I mean, that's really impressive for well, the society it, to get that it done. It is. It's wonderful. That's like crazy. That. So it used to be the, the um, investigations were completely done in the dark. Mm -hmm. Now the school lights will shine in, the headlights will shine in, but... The other thing is, if you're outside and someone's in there with a light, you can see, mm -hmm. okay, there's somebody in there. And I, I have the only key in the entire town. <laughs> so what's going on in there? Right. So anyway, I have security cameras that you might you might run into. I've tried to set them so they don't flash on your equipment. Mm -hmm. But I do get complaints about that sometimes. Would you shut off the flash, your infrared flash, because it jacks up our equipment. So I've tried to fix them all. If they're flashing at you, let me know. 
We will. Okay. Yeah, if I know anything, let us know. We'll give you a very angry phone call. He turned his damn cameras off. Security up, etc. Yeah. This stairway is new. That was new a year ago. Really? Just yes. last year? The color is sort of bluish. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the color. Someone found a piece of paint uh, underneath the stairway and had it analyzed and said, this is the original color of the stairway. I'm, I'm skeptical. I don't think it was blue. The other thing about the stairway is um, both sides were closed in. The fronts of the steps were closed in and it had not been open since... In 1909 when the building was completed so we were ready to find all kinds of coins and keys and all kinds of stuff under there we had people with uh, metal detectors ready to sort through all the stuff under the stairs took the stairs away and people sorting through and absolutely nothing Aww. no coins mm -hmm. no keys no didn't find Damn. anything in there <laughs> very disappointing <laughs> that is kind of sad I yeah, mean, it was, it was pretty sad. It was pretty amazing, but it was pretty sad. You'd expect to find something under there. At least there. something, you know. This kid's been walking up those stairs for 30, 40 years. So oh, this is the basement entrance. Through, the older kids went in the, the front door that we just looked at with the new steps. Too. Younger kids came in the basement. So this is the original entrance here. And they did have to go down to go into that door. And we'll go in there. There's a, uh, you can see there's a storm. A uh, picture around that that's probably from the from the 20s. Uh, we do get a lot of wind in here, uh, and it's cold. Uh, we're 6,000 feet, so it can be pretty like a wind tunnel under here. So I'm sure that that was built probably in the late teens, maybe 20s, to to keep all the the snow from drifting inside when kids come in. Mm. Well, let's go on downstairs. Hey, there's the one key. <laughs> yep, the one key. Now the, the patina here is all real. There's no Hollywood here. We've not redone this to make it look old. We've not uh, made the hinges sound old. It's all real and <laughs> it's all old. We do have um, uh, people who make movies, uh, casual movies come in. They always like take a sound bite of the, of the uh, hinge because it's real. Mm. It really is a hundred year old freaking hinge. Right. Wow. <laughs> that will give you a piece of it. that action. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. <laughs> Isn't that That's perfect? That's a moneymaker, yeah. Ominous, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't get any better. Uh, so this would, this is the, I call it the subterranean floor. It's the ground floor that the younger kids would, would come in. There are a lot of um, rooms that I, I tend to ignore. Mostly because they've got junk stored in them or they're in disrepair or I don't get around to cleaning them. So we'll take you to the rooms that I clean and that I feel responsible for and, and take care of. Now in this room here, you can see behind, it's a, it's a pretty big area. The kids would come in here and congregate and, and talk or whatever and then go to the various classrooms. There are three classrooms off of this area here that the younger kids would go to. The last graduating class left in 1948 um, and when they left they just kind of kind of took off there's no security building didn't really get locked up no one took care of it a lot of stuff disappeared mm -hmm. you know, desks and fixtures and fittings and and uh, doorknobs and all that kind of stuff disappeared so uh, by the time someone started caring in the 80s most of the stuff was gone but you can see this beautiful door the stuff we do have we put inside this box Oh, wow. So this is all original. It's all... Okay, this looks all previously done. Up, yeah. And it all is... Uh, this probably would be where the kindergartners, first graders went to school. So you can see all the desks uh, around the room. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful. There are... Uh, there is a, a coal stove in here that's not original. If you look on the back wall there, you see some air vents. When this building was open, the, the ceilings were high enough that the traditional way of heating an, an upscale building is you have a boiler uh, and you circulate hot water in the radiators and the room gets cold. Mm. You open the valve on the radiator, the radiator gets hot and the room gets warm. But with a high ceiling, like we have in this building, that doesn't really work. Heat goes up and the girls get cold and everybody's unhappy, right? So 
They had forced air heat, which is very unusual. Uh, it was undoubtedly the only forced air heat building in Nevada. You probably would have to go as far as Denver or maybe San Francisco to find another one. It's very unusual. But by the 30s, uh, the build, furnace, I'm sure, yes. needed some work. There weren't a lot of kids in the school anymore, so they would shut down most of the rooms and they put in a coal stove like this in the rooms they were still using. So that's what that's for. There's some dolls, uh, in case you're interested in that sort of stuff. <laughs> a lot of people burn balls and jacks and take a picture of it when they get here, take a picture when they leave, and see if there's a difference. I do have some stories about that. I have a lot of stories that we have to share with you, but these, uh, the window coverings, the, the wooden window coverings are all original. The fabric is new, but the wood is original. Um, all the floor, the wall, and again, all the all the colors, the patina, the aging, we've not recreated any of that. We're trying to save it. Our current issue right now is that the, the roof leaks, and the, unfortunately, to put a new roof on, we have to completely redesign, re-engineer the attic. Uh, that's in process. It's gonna be probably seven, eight $800,000 before we're done. Dang. We're about two-thirds of the way through that. And so the president of our uh, historical society, fortunately, is a very good writer. He has very good uh, credibility with the, the uh, agencies that grant money. And so he's pretty prolific about getting what money that we need to save the building from falling down. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. And a lot of people think it's a waste, but it comes from federal grants that are mm -hmm. for historic preservation. Mm -hmm. comes from state money. A lot of it comes from private money. And we do tours. We do uh, uh, overnight investigations. That yeah. money also goes all, to the All the extra society. visits also help to is, uh, keep we'll this thing up and running. Grant. Some of our grants are two-to-one matching. So if we have a, an overnight tour that generates $500, a lot of times we have $500 matching with that on a grant. So it winds up nice. being a contribution of $1,000 to the, to the building. Which that's I think is pretty cool. That's just for I'm one here. visit. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I do this. Yeah, that's the only reason you're here. It's for the money. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not because we're nice guys. It's, no. a, it's a great building. <laughs> I love seeing that all the hey, you should. Uh, this is really a bad picture. Um, Jerry has one in her shop. Did you see that? Yeah. Okay, she has a mural size one. But the important thing is how how much stuff there was in a town. This is San Francisco. It's not Goldfield. The idea being that when Goldfield caught fire, it probably looked like that. I want to be one of these guys. <laughs> I want to be watching it. So come on in here. We don't know. This was not a classroom. We don't know what this room was. Uh, there are no chalkboards. It has an outside door. That's all a little bit unusual. Uh, Goldfield had about 25,000 people in, which is by far the biggest uh, city in Nevada. It all, this also was the biggest and the most, the best equipped high school in the entire state. It happened to be the only school outside of University of Nevada, Reno, that had a full-size indoor basketball court, uh, which is <laughs> quite a claim to fame. It was not in this building, it was Kitty Corner uh, across the street. In Las Vegas was about six, seven hundred people, so UNLV was, was a long, a long ways uh, yet from being from being made. Now this room is right. could have been for visiting teachers, could have been for guest lectures. Uh, we don't really know. Some people think it's an indoor gymnasium uh, for working out when it's cold. We don't really know. But there are a couple things important about this room. One of them is the furniture, like the desk I'm sitting on, and some of the stuff over here. This is 1905, 1906 original furniture from the um, so stuff from courthouse. Before it closed. The reason it's here well, is because the, the people that work in the courthouse, a lot of them aren't fan of old stuff and they want new stuff. So they want to take the old stuff and throw it away. So the historical society says, don't throw it away, call us. We'll come get it for you. So that's why this is here. Mm. We don't know what we're going to do with it. We just know it doesn't belong in the dumpster. We may want to uh, make an, a museum out of this room. Something we don't know. Our plans are still right. are still in, a, in formation. Plans and flux, but, but there's we know a plan that to try and get something done. Belong in the dump. Some other things you can see if you look up and you see the the original wiring. You can see that the way they insulated from the building is they drill a hole and jam that porcelain piece of uh, pipe in there. And there's a junction box, which is just a matter of wrapping wire around a post. Uh, and you can you can see why a lot of buildings caught fire oh, yeah. in 1905 <laughs> because yeah. there was they had 
just uh, wires wrapped the, around wood. When a, oh, when a this is going to go well. Yeah catches fire so <laughs> a lot of ways for a building Life to work goes warm other thing Boom. about this this era is most of the light most of the heat was created by a flame and when you have an old building that's got dry wood and you heat with flame and you light with flame you got a, uh, a situation where uh, you're going to have a lot of building burn mm -hmm. there was a big fire i think in 1913 uh, the story is that someone was distilling moonshine and it still blew up and a Ooh. third of the town burned from that. I, I don't know for sure, but that story comes from a lot of different places. It also was a big flood that was tough on the town and a lot of people lost everything. And so rather than keep mining, they left. There are several geologists' opinions that there's most of the gold that is was in the valley is still here. Between 1906 mm. and about 1904, 1940, they were about, 90 million dollars worth of gold that came out of these hills that's how much was documented it went through a bank a lot of gold i'm sure came out of the ground went in somebody's pocket and never got recorded anyway right. that translates to about 16 or 18 billion dollars worth of gold these days that's a lot of money so there's a lot of stuff goes along with that kind of money a lot of good things a lot of bad things and this building is one of those it was an outstanding building for the time. It's still a beautiful building. The high school that I went to was poured concrete and cinder blocks and didn't have any windows. It was a lot more like a prison. Yeah. I wasn't in prison, <laughs> but it was more like a prison <laughs> oh, than me, the I high love school. But about it's going cheap, to school and, like, and uh, this building is nothing please. cheap, nothing ugly about this building. It's a beautiful building, and the historical society and you with your donations are keeping it from falling down. And that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on. A couple of items about this, this building. You see, this is an original door. It has five panels in it. In Goldfield, if you had money in 1900, 1905, 1910, you put these kind of doors in. It's like having avocado appliances in the 70s and all that kind of stuff. So what is it is a mark of money and style. You can also see that it's on its original uh, copper rollers. You can go to Home Depot nice. and get rollers, but they're not copper and they're not nope. made in the U.S. They're not made by someone with a, with a hammer and, a, and who melted them. So that's cool. I'm glad they didn't walk off. Right. I hope they don't walk right. off. <laughs> we want to keep them here. Well, we do have some space in our car. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, we mentioned before, was a, was an entryway. Yeah, I really trying to uh, seal the copper hinges in, right now would be the uh, worst idea. You, you, you might invite somebody to follow them. There are four pianos in this little vestibule area. Um, in order to be a teacher in Goldfield in 1906, 1907, 1908, you had to be and female. Knows, uh, you had to be single. Some of the more recent you had to play piano. Files. And I think, I think you had to have perfect handwriting. There's some original writing on uh, one of the chalkboards upstairs, and it looks like it came off a printer. Um, if a teacher decided she wanted to get married, or if it was discovered that she was married surreptitiously, she'd have to quit. And we have mm. some old newspapers in our in our shop that document a teacher was found to be um, married, and she was fired with shame and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> really, this is too bad. Yes. Why? Because that's just what you, you can you can go Freudian on that if you want to. Yeah, right. But the only right. man in the building uh, during the day was the principal, who was always a guy, and the guy who maintained the furnace and a maintenance guy. All the teachers were were, were single women. Uh, the the mm -hmm. other idea behind that is that if you're if you have a job, you're providing for your family. If you're a single female, you're providing for either for yourself or for uh, your single uh, head of the household. But if you get married, your husband is financially responsible to support you. So you're taking the job away from a guy who needs to support a family. So that's the rationalization behind if she gets married, she has that's to quit. Beautiful. But uh, there was a a group from from uh, UK touring here a couple of weeks ago, and they said that women couldn't even vote. I think it was in Scotland. Women couldn't even vote in Scotland until about 50 years ago. So, <laughs> you know, as arcane as it seems, yeah. we're not the worst there is. Yeah, no. right. No, very true, to be fair. That's crazy, though. Single it's crazy. Room. Every single room. But it's still single very room. obtuse and stupid yeah. in <clears throat> hindsight. There's new framing here. The, when this building was built, each floor was built on the floor below it, which sounds okay, except that you realize that when you get to the third floor, 
it's not built on the ground anymore. It's not supported by the ground, it's supported by the second floor, which is supported by the first floor, which is supported by the ground. The problem mm -hmm. is that the collective weight of the third floor and the second floor begin to make the first floor sag and sink. And that's what happened. And so the only weight-bearing walls in the entire building were the south wall and the north wall. And so over time, the roof starts to go like this, the walls start to go like this, and then everything is leaking and it accelerates. And that's part of the reason why the wall had fallen off that we saw before. So this is uh, uh. now a new weight-bearing wall. We had a, a company come in uh, and were able to build a, uh, a weight-bearing wall inside the building. So now this mm -hmm. holds up the roof and th there's another wall uh, behind us that is also a weight-bearing wall. So now we can put a roof on a structure that won't sag. Right. So you wonder why an architect would do that? Obviously they knew better. My own suspicion is that the company that was building it took a shortcut. And so right. they didn't go to the ground intentionally because they didn't want to spend the money to go all the way to the ground. So they built each successive floor on the floor below it without having to go all the way to the ground and get a weight-bearing wall. I don't know that, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's most likely reason. That's kind of the way it goes around here. Yeah. Anyway, yep. we're proud of, they get it built the new corners. Yeah, we're proud <laughs> of our new wall, and now it holds up the roof, and the roof is going to stay there. Let's come on down this way. The easy reason is most likely reason. This is the girls' bathroom. It's the only one in the building. Uh, you can yeah. see the uh, marks on the wall where the toilet tanks used to be. I don't think they were stalled, but we don't really know. They have all been stolen, so we don't mm. really know what was here. Everything is original. It's pretty fallen down. It's pretty creepy. I was here working a couple of summers ago, uh, and it was up on the, up on the roof. There's a car out in the road in the street in front, and they'd been sitting there for about 10 minutes. So I came down and went and talked to them and found out there was a, a guy driving and three older women in the car. And the three women in the car had gone to school here. So mm. I'm on my knees. Can I get you some Jack Daniels? Can I get you a room? What can I get you? I want to <laughs> hear your stories. I want you to come in because the number of people that are alive that went to school here is pretty small. Yeah. It's, it's right. certainly less than 10. And there's three of them right here in front of me. All of them said, this is the closest they're ever getting to that building again. They said, that building was so creepy when they were actually going to school here in the daylight with classes on that they wouldn't even come down here and in, in the basement and go to the bathroom. They would rather go mm. home instead. So <clears throat> I, I lost my chance. They probably are all dead by now. And, and so I, <sighs> I don't know that there are any survivors of Goldfield That's High all. School, any living survivors of Goldfield High School. But so, even back then, um, when they closed it, it was so creepy they didn't want to go low to do some, anything like that. Uh, I don't know if you want a Wild. editorial comment here, but there is some some flooring in here. This is from the hotel. Uh, this is a, this is my soapbox. The, <clears throat> we used to do tours of the of the hotel, um, and when you come in, I don't know if you guys have been there, but uh, some of your viewers obviously have. You come in the front door. There's a column with like the wheels. leather settees and a, and a big bar and a big safe. And off to the left, when you when you come in the, the lobby of the hotel, there's a, a men's lounge, right? And it's closed off. Women can't go in. Oh. Um, but in the men's lounge, as you might guess, oh, there's a stairway. Follow. Goes down Whoa. to the tunnel that goes to the whorehouse, right? Goes down. I'm not screaming, but thanks the for whorehouse. follow. So guys can go uh, enjoy themselves and come back. Come back up to the men's lounge oh. and the women never knew what happened. Sorry about that. Got distracted by the uh, sudden announcement that someone was following. Uh, continuing roughly where we left off. I, I don't know that there are any survivors of Goldfield High School, any living survivors of Goldfield High School. So um, all the stories are probably dead. There's some, uh, I don't know if you want an editorial comment here, but there is some, some flooring in here. This is from the hotel. Uh, this, is a, this is my soapbox. The, <clears throat> We used to do tours of the, of the hotel, um, and when you come in, I don't know if you guys have been there, but uh, some of your viewers obviously have. You come in the front door, there's these columns with the leather settees and a, and a big bar and a big safe, and 
off to the left when you when you come in the, the lobby of the hotel, there's a, a men's lounge, right? And it's closed off, women can't go in. Um, but in the men's lounge, as you might guess, there's a stairway that goes down to a tunnel that goes to the whorehouse, right? Goes down, comes up inside the whorehouse. So guys can go uh, enjoy themselves and come back, come back up to the men's lounge and the women never knew what happened, which is absolute baloney. <laughs> women obviously knew what was going on. They just couldn't do anything about it. Anyway, the, the owners, the previous owners of the hotel have uh, caved in the tunnel. They bricked over the entrance. They put um, framing over that. They put drywall over that. They took out the stairway and they paved over where the stairway used to be. So when you're touring the, the hotel, you say, imagine there's a staircase. Imagine there's a tunnel. The tour house that you could see four blocks over there, the, the owners have done a wonderful job restoring. The tunnel's been caved in from this side, not from that side. And so all the history has been has been erased. So that's it. my soapbox. We, we stopped doing the hotel when they started destroying the history. So we don't want to support them. We want nothing to do with them. We wish they would sell it to somebody who cares about the history of the building um, and not whatever it is they care about. So. They can have their flooring back when they want it. We are also the curators of the baby grand piano that was born in Germany, imported directly to the Goldfield Hotel. And that was uh, slated to go on Craigslist in Las Vegas until we heard about it. And I took my work crew with me over there and said that piano is not going to Vegas, it's going to my place. And so we took it to my place and there it will stay, will stay until either I die or until the owners of the hotel are in the process of restoring it, want it back. So it's, it, it's safe where it is, it's flooring is safe where it is, and that's our story with the, almost the story with the, with the hotel. My understanding is that the, as they've taken out the history of the hotel, while we were still there, as they were taking out the history of the hotel, the paranormal activity started dropping off and it started increasing here as they imported the stuff here. One more hmm. uh, uh, story about that. There's the Otis Elevator in the, in the hotel. It's the first Otis Elevator west of uh, Chicago. So it's historically important. It doesn't work anymore, but the, right. down in the basement, there's all the draw works and the switches and the relays and the cables and all that just sitting there. Someone took it apart and couldn't figure it out. So all the stuff, the tools are laying there. Instead of making a museum out of that, they framed it in, put sheetrock on it so you can't see it which I think is a mistake. It should be in glass. It should be a museum piece. And it's not. Anyway. Right. That's a huge historical yeah. thing. Yeah. It's pretty sad. I mean, it's just, yeah. The, are you the hearing a bunch of noises around here? Yeah. Like crazy. They I don't know totally what, mistreated that whole time. Are you hearing like a squeaking and like thumping? Well, that's why I wear earplugs. Yeah? I don't want to... <laughs> there's a lot of sounds in here. The wind has died down. It's fairly quiet. I didn't lock the front gate. You know, I'll lock it if you want. But um, mm. the streets are pretty quiet. But it's not quiet in here. And it almost never is quiet in here. So, anyway, that's why I don't come here. I can hear it already. Because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to freak out. You know, there's a sink here. It's got cold water only. There was hot. There was running water here, but not hot water. Um, this, I thought, was a piece of uh, white trash uh, gas station um, <laughs> garbage that yeah. someone took on the wall. But I started looking into it. In about 1928, um, the only way you could dry your hands in a gas station in a public bathroom was a, a roll of towel. You wipe your hands on the towel and you pull it down and it rolls up in the back and who knows what you wipe your hands on. <laughs> so I think it was the international paper decided they could do better. So they started making paper towels, and this is about 1928, 1929, and paper towels caught on instantly as a huge hit, particularly among um, uh, homemakers who, you know, you spill something, you want to have to get out of the towel and then oh, wash it. Yeah. You, right? you get out of, mm -hmm. you rip off a paper towel, you clean it up, and you're done. Instant hit. And now it's like, how do you live without paper towels? Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. No. <laughs> can't can't even. By the case. I ain't going back to the Not a single job I've been in, in over uh, 20 years. It doesn't survive on paper wow. towel these so days. So this is a this is a pretty typical classroom. Right now it's a center point of a feud between us and the county, us being the historical society. The county courthouse is right across the street. And they want to put a... A metal container here so they can put their records in it so they don't have to walk 
uh, two blocks to where the county owns other property. Mm. This is we're in the middle of a historical district um, that you can't really do that with uh, without losing your historical district designation. So we don't want any metal containers. We don't want any railroad cars. We don't want any of that. We want to we want this to be historical. But a lot of people in the county don't care. So this is our our truth. They can bring their records in here, and we'll keep them safe for them. If they won't build, if they won't bring in a metal container here, because if one gets here, it's probably not ever going to leave. So this is kind of junk. Um, there are some interesting things here. These, I don't know if you can see those uh, boards with the springs around them. Those are 1850, 1855 uh, Gold Rush era water pipes. Wow. So those mm. boards are actually in a curve, like in like a, a whiskey barrel. And when they get wet, they swell up against the the wire, and it becomes a pipe. So how those got here, I don't know, but I had no idea what they were until someone explained it. And it's like, that is really cool. That's, yeah. that's 50 years that's older than stuff. Goldfield. Yeah, interesting. It's cool anyway, and I'm glad it's here because it's safe here. Yeah. Um, there are slate chalkboards here. Most chalkboards are just painted painted plywood. Those are real stone that have been quarried. Um, these are all broken. Uh, several of the chalkboards upstairs are still slate. Wow. Oh. Well, what's going on upstairs? Okay. The real stuff. This guy. This is, I guess, exhibit C or D or whatever. Um, you see a, an electric panel, uh, and you can see on the back it's got the original wires that are covered with um, with cotton and uh, a fashion of rubber. This was one of three main switches in the basin of the hotel. Mm. So this provided one third of the power to the Goldfield Hotel. When they upgraded to modern breaker boxes, they took all these out and they threw them away. Two of them broke as they were throwing them in the dumpster. This one survived, and someone happened from Got the it. historical society happened to recognize it and brought it here. Got the original switches in it, and like the elevator, it belongs in a glass case oh, in the basement exactly. of the hotel. Doesn't belong in a dumpster, doesn't even belong this, in a high school, man belongs is in a glass a... case over there. And when they care, they can have it back. This man is just <laughs> trying his damnedest to, right to keep that poor hotel from completely right. dying out. That makes me want to go. Like yeah. Flip the switch. <laughs> Why don't you guys tell it to somebody who cares? Seriously. Right. Why do you keep it? Why throw it in the damn trash? Yeah, exactly. They don't have to throw it away. They just call me. You don't have to call <laughs> anybody. Take it off the wall. Shit, I'd take it. Come on. <laughs> So how are we doing? Doing okay? Doing Wonderful. great. Okay. So come on in the furnace room here. Good stuff so far, yeah. A lot of interesting things. That's the, again, this is our a main, job main we, uh, we, make a break out of this. There was some work going and on on the inside, they, uh, but it just got so wet well. in here that we just stopped I doing anything. Through this, to do but I work. did have a big cup so of tea. So most of the tools, there were a lot of uh, right. tools in here. I'll back it up a little bit too. I, I love the, the first half is like usually a lot of uh, facts. And actually now looking at the video, it's a little over two hours. I think we can get through the two hours just fine. It's when they get really long that I can kind of start to flag a little. But this this looks like it's going to be pretty solid throughout. I just have to do a little bit of editing because of that interruption. Anyways, uh, back to his story here. Now, uh, uh, this is one of the things I think uh, that makes Paranormal Files one of the stronger paranormal uh, shows or channels on YouTube is that the fact that they delve big time into the history and there's a lot of interesting stuff to learn and hear about that you normally won't hear from anyone else. They do some basic broad brush um, investigation or history stuff and including like twin paranormal but uh, you're not going to hear that from everybody. You're not this kind of detail and like Paranormal Files does and I think that's kind of their strength uh, outside of the interesting stuff they might catch throughout the investigation. So, anyways. This is our machine shop. As we, we, there was some work going on on the inside, but it just got so wet in here that we just stopped doing anything having to do with woodwork. So most of the tools, there, been, there were a lot of uh, tools in here, they're gone. Mm. The roof still leaks, it's not done yet. Uh, we were hoping it's going to get done summer 23. That didn't happen, um, but it's, it's tough to get someone to come here and work on things because 
we're a long ways from any supplies. So you got to bring right. your guys here, got to bring all your materials, got to bring your equipment. Mm -hmm. If you forget something, someone driving to Vegas or to Reno or something like that, so if you didn't bring it, you're not going to get it. You're not going to find it here. <laughs> so not anytime soon. There's a yeah. lot of companies who don't want to come here and do work. We So our issue is not so much money. We have money. We have a hard time getting people to come here and work, even though we pay a premium for uh, what we want uh, to do. The work that we get done is excellent money to get quality. Done right. uh, we have no complaints about that. But it's hard to find people who are willing to come here and do good quality work. Anyway, this mm -hmm. was the uh, furnace room. You can see up here where the furnace used to be. We don't have any pictures or images of that, so we don't know what it looked like. We just know this is what it's it just was. gone. And it was coal fired. <sighs> see here, coal. <laughs> and you can come in if you want. Oh wow! It killed everything that was alive. Killed everything that was alive. So the the coal would come in and would be delivered in that window up there. That doll appears in various places in the hotel. Looks like someone left a detector in here. <laughs> this um, coal, not a, not a ghosty thing, but this, this room had coal in it for 30 years and the, the walls are still white. It's because they were using this coal, which is anthracite coal, which is very hard. It doesn't write. It doesn't, you can handle it all day and your, and your hands don't get black. It's very hard, it burns very clean, but it mm. doesn't grow in Nevada, it doesn't grow in Utah. It's a little bit in Wyoming, this coal probably had to come from Pennsylvania or, or um, West Virginia, because it's right. a very unusual kind. No one burns this anymore. It burns very hot, it burns very clean. It'll burn all night, um, but most of the coal around here is bituminous and uh, um, it, it burns very quick, it's very cheap, it's dirty. Anyway, that's yeah. an enigma to me. I don't understand why they have anthracite coal here. It's very expensive. Very and weird. It doesn't grow from anywhere around here. That is really yeah. that's interesting. A very far journey, especially yeah. back in the day from Pennsylvania. Walking a half yeah. to get that stuff. So, but with this quality of coal, you can fill up the furnace five o'clock at night and come back in the morning and it's still burning. It's still wow. warm and you can just <laughs> shovel in the next day's work of coal. Is this that coal? Yeah. That's why it didn't so that really deteriorate as bad as it probably could have. Yeah. You can see when you, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make a mark. Any of the other kinds of coal you could write your name with. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the boys' wow. bathroom. All right. Again, it's the only one in the building. The girls' bathroom we went to is the only girls' bathroom in the building. It's the only boys' bathroom. This is a lot smaller. Um, I hate this room. It's my least favorite room in the building. I don't come within 50 feet of this room when I'm the only one here, even in the daytime. I just hate it. I don't know why. I just feel like there's a sixth grader in here worried and scared the poop out of me. And I don't, <laughs> want, to, I don't want any part of that. So I just don't come here. There was a, a group here that had a, a bunch of equipment. There was a young lady, probably in mid 20s, who uh, said she was a very experienced uh, paranormal person. She had a lot of equipment, probably $10,000 mm. worth of stuff. And she brought it in here and set it up said, I want you guys to leave me alone in here for a little bit. I'm thinking, I don't know if that's a good idea because this room is just creepy to me. I don't like it. And so I'm not going to go very far, even though you want to be left alone. I'm not going to go very far away. About 10 minutes later, she's out of the room and she left all her gear here. She wouldn't say anything, but she never came back in until the sun came up the next day and she came pick her <laughs> stuff up. So I don't know what happened. But to me, that fits this room. I don't like it. She got scared like shitless. Alone. And if someone comes <laughs> in and wants to want me to leave them alone, whatever here, was in I'm here is scary. tense. So I don't want any bad you can things. Feel it in the on. air, apparently. Anyway, this is the boys' bathroom, and it's it's. I don't like it. This is a. The boys' bathroom is full uh, of eerie boys' energy. A, uh, a closet of. Don't something. stay long. A creep room. <laughs> you can go in if you want, but there's a lot of doors in here. You're welcome to open. Whatever doors you want, walk wherever you want. There's no unsafe places to go as far as structure, uh, mechanics. Fair enough. And the cold water sink. No, no cold water. water. And that's where the towel dispenser used to be. Yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> Someone actually took that one. Yeah. 1920 paper towel. Take a left and go up. Oh, this, this is a enigma here. 
This is a 1880s door. You can see the dimension is shorter, it's narrower, and the doorknob is here. It doesn't have the five panel uh, style. This doesn't have the five panel style either, but this is modern dimension. So you can see hmm. the difference between a modern dimension door and an 1880s door. We have no idea why that's here. We don't know why this partition wall is here. This is not original to the building. Um, we think it's because Interesting. this is the room we were in before that was not a classroom where the desks and mm -hmm. all that are. I think it's because if the men's, if the boys' bathroom gets, door gets open and someone in there, they can see in the bathroom. So this wall was built secondarily. Anyway, it's interesting that someone took a door out of their garage that was 30 years older than the building. Oh, yeah. and right. Put this wall <laughs> in. And put it Let's in go there, on yeah. upstairs. Anyway, so this would be the main floor. There's about six classrooms off of this uh, floor. You can see if you look around, there's a lot of uh, gorgeous woodwork. The area where I'm standing here, we've had three uh, weddings here. So if you want a, a location that's historic and photogenic and free, this is it. And <laughs> I'm an ordained minister of the Universal Life Church, oh, so I can yeah. even marry you. <laughs> Jerry's a photographer, so we're all set up. Anyway, Got that's for all your basic side. needs. Yeah. It's a beautiful building. Um, and you can see when you look around and see all the, all the woodwork that is here. All the floor is uh, hardwood maple. It's all original. So let's go into one of our classrooms here. Oh, hmm. This is Attitude. the weight bearing wall I talked about before. Mm -hmm. So they're oh, able to yeah, insert the that bear. between this. This all had to be moved. This is the original wall on the other side of the uh, the other side of the wall, and this wall here, sturdy as it looks, did not go to the ground. So that's what all this is about. These had to be tied together, and this one goes to the ground. Mm -hmm. Make this place stop. So this stop is the window guy's lab. He takes the wood out of the wall. It looks like this. It's in pretty bad shape. And he uh, takes it all apart. He even makes his own doweling. If there's mm. a piece of glass in here, he can keep. You take that glass out. Some of the glass in the building is original, some of it's not. But he will make it into a frame and is able to put it into walls, and they look like that. <clears throat> the guy's a magician. Um, That's super you can see Looks here great. on the wall, I uh, used to say, solid work. Merry Christmas 1947. It really doesn't anymore. Uh, there's a piece of glass over there that I put over that. Uh, we were uh, touring the building for about two years, and every time we'd have a big storm, a piece of that would, would come down and it would bug me. So a young lady on one of our tours said, why don't you glass that in? And I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't have a reason. <laughs> really stupid that I didn't because I built a, I I restored a 1907 uh, boarding house that we live in. And I glassed in uh, the original uh, wallpaper, so you can see that. Mm. We also found a bullet hole in the wall. So we've taken down oh. layers and layers and layers of wallpaper. The last layer has a bullet hole in it. In one of the bedrooms, there's a little entrance wound, looks like a 30 caliber. The other side of the wall is this big chunk of wood that's missing. So mm. we taped the wallpaper back and we glassed that in, so you can, you can see that. Anyway, it really bugs me I didn't gloss that in until most of the stuff is gone. So the, my, my karma is, is after me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this is the glass maker's lab. When he's done with this room, this is one of the rooms that I would like to uh, begin using for something else. Um, we've had three weddings in here. This would be a great room to have, a, have the bride get ready or you know, have a dinner or whatever. Um, Prep room my or intention is, yeah. to, is to finish the floor, uh, redo the woodwork around the outsides, have it be a room where you can have a card game, you can have a keg, you can have a sleepover, you can investigate the building, and there's, there's light in here, there's water in here, all the kind of stuff that you would like to see, internet, and the rest of the building is the way it is now. It's historic, but this would be a room that's comfortable and usable. Sounds like a fun mm. time to me. Would be nice. <laughs> well, it's a big undertaking. Oh, yeah. 
So this would be yeah, a, I understand uh, these have one separate area here and there, there, there that would be more modern no just to be um, usable. There is a bathroom and there is a sink. You can see the dimensions of this. Um, the entryway to the sink is about the same as my dimension. <laughs> but back then, women, the average height for, for a female was 5'1". Mm -hmm. Average weight was about 95 pounds, and so they're a lot smaller uh, than today. The average guy was about 5'6". Of interest here is a, a commode. You're probably not interested in toilets, but you might want to come in here and, and take a look in here. See, there's no, there's no puddle. Oh, yeah. It's flat. This is called a waterfall toilet. There's a, a lead pipe in the back, so when you flush it, whatever's on here on the platform goes into the front and flushes out that way. That's actually pretty cool. You can see that's rainwater. Yeah. Old school. But you yeah. can see it's very inconvenient and it stinks, right? There's no splash, but who wants to? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm splash. really glad we graduated from that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the splash. Me yeah. too. That's called a waterfall toilet. <laughs> if, you, if you're proud of what you do when you sit on a pot, you really like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are I'm proud of my juices. Tanks. You see the finished carpentry on the outside, and on the inside is a, a, a copper uh, tank. You see this one, the way this one flushes. Loose that lead pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, so you pretty much have to flush that with your foot. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be a teacher's, in the teacher's lounge. <clears throat> no kids in here, I'm sure. This was the library. There's not a lot of shelves in here. Uh, the kids would keep their textbooks in their own room. So this would be a reference library. Uh, before Google, um, yep. so there's not a lot of room in here. The books are all long gone, but uh, some of the shelves are gone too. But so it surprises me that it's not a bigger room than this for a high school of 400 students. You would think there would be more, more, more books, space, but there weren't. Hmm. This is super cool. All right, let's go this way. Oh. Three of these steps have been vacuumed. The rest of them are still dusty. Before you guys came here, I was vacuuming out this, this area here. And um, I was cleaning out this and I thought, well, I've got a little bit of time before you guys get here. I'll start vacuuming down the steps. I'm not going down the basin because it's starting to get dark, right? <clears throat> so I'm here and I'm vacuuming off the top step and, and I get this feeling like someone blowing whiskey on the back of my head. Obviously, there's nobody here, but the smell of someone with whiskey breath is very distinctive, right? It's not something you just make up. Yeah. Was there someone drinking whiskey around here? And I thought, well, that's, that's bullshit. I'm going back to work. So I step down here. I'm vacuuming that step right there. Same thing. I puff a whiskey breath on the back of my head. It's like, this is kind of weird. So a lot of things happen. I'm wearing earplugs because I don't want to hear what's going on. But now I'm smelling what's going on. So by the time I get to the third step, every time I go down to the next step, I have this whiskey breath on the back of my head. And it's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I packed up my vacuum. I think I'm done for and today. I'm done here. The sun's still up. I don't know what to do, but I'm going. What else to do today? That's not. <laughs> and that was so, just today. That was just today. That was just before I met you guys. No, I'm not going to sit here with so, creepy whiskey, that's man. That's in real time. So if you guys find someone, if you make a contact tonight with someone, I would love to know if there was a janitor here who was fired or who had an alcohol problem. If that's the feeling I got, is that I'm cleaning the building that he used to clean, and he's breathing whiskey on me because I have earplugs, and he can't stomp around and, and, and have me Spooky. hear him. Noises, and yeah. I don't want a visual, so what's left? Well, there's a smell. <laughs> so you take a shot of whiskey and you breathe on the back of my head. It's like, okay, I don't know. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just saying yeah, that's contact what happened. Tie, Very punk. distinct smell. Too. And it, <laughs> it happened enough to get me out of here, and that's unusual. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't be here if you guys weren't here. Well, sorry to right. make you come back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this is another classroom. Watch the floor there. So this floor is, is maple. It's tongue and groove. 
and when it gets wet, it gets fat and it swells up. And so mm -hmm. it humps up like this and you can't push it back down. You can trip over it, but that's it. So in the room that I want to rehab, the floor had been humped up. And so you have to take it apart all the way to the corner and start again. I'm okay doing mm -hmm. that, but that's why the, we didn't push these back down because you can't. This is a a science bit. lab. This is a yeah. chemistry table here. Um, a lot of it has been looted, but some of the original drawers are here, which is cool. These doors are originally falling off, but I'm okay with that, as long as it's still here. Right. Some sort of a resistant paint. <clears throat> I had a, uh, probably a gas um, burner there in here. A view of the, of the mining activity. Mm -hmm. So check out this window. Ooh. It's great. <laughs> I have a house built in 2015 and the windows don't work that way. <laughs> right. It's counterweighted. You can see, if you look up there, you can see the oh, bolt. Yeah. So there's, a, there's an iron torpedo that goes down in the, inside the wall as the window goes up. So you don't need a latch. Bring back the old school windows. They work so order. much better. Now this one unfortunately cracked and this is an original pane. So that's, that's too bad. Uh, um, yep. Guy does a beautiful job on the windows. And two years ago, all the windows were plywood. Every single one of them. And I think that's really cool. You need to get somebody yeah, with right. like a yeah. So yeah. Great, window fix it, glass window fix it, things. A Maybe they can still build it and repair it, but it's hard to say. I would like to say a building's getting younger, but I think it's not. It's just getting more presentable. Yeah. <laughs> right. Learning how to put on makeup. Yeah, it's shaving. Shaving every day now. <laughs> so that floor is pretty, pretty fresh. Learning to put on a good public appearance. Over and over again. I think I mentioned before this was when this was built. It was by far the the biggest high school in the state. Uh, there were. It was at least twice as big as any any school that was in Reno, which was the the, the biggest town up until uh, Goldfield sprung up. Up in the Reno corner of the state, there's the Comstock Silver Mine. There's still mining. There's a lot of a lot of mm. silver there. That had been going wow. on since about 1855, 1860, and this is Boomtown. Here was from 1902 to about uh, 1912. It was booming, and then it was started to collapse. But Goldfield really dominated Nevada for about five or six, seven years, financially and culturally and all of that. There was a, a sanctioned um, a boxing match here that went 43 rounds. Joe Gans, a, a black guy, and Buster Nelson, a white guy, fighting. With the reason I bring that up is because back in those days, white guys didn't fight black guys. Mm. <laughs> so black guys would fight each other, white fight guys would fight each other. Was surprised, this yeah. is a ra is a, was a match where... Uh, Buster Nelson, the white guy, agreed to fight a black guy, and whether he won or lost, he made twice as much money. <clears throat> I think his purse was about 5000 just for fighting, whether he won or not. Right. Joe Gann, the black guy, his purse was about 2500 uh, only if he won. If he lost, he didn't get anything. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's history. Dang. That's just the way it was. Damn. But the promoters mm. won. They, were, they got a lot more than that. The guy who promoted the fight, named Tex Rickard, has a house across the street that's it's been gloriously restored. It's available on Airbnb, and I don't mean to make a commercial, but it's in wonderful condition. But he went on to, he was so successful here, he went back to New York, which is where he, <clears throat> where he uh, came from, and he bought an entire uh, city block in the area of Madison Square Garden, which he was also part of. And he named that block, that hotel and a casino, and and bar and all that kind of stuff. He named that Goldfield. It no mm. longer is, exists, but that was the history of New York City in uh, 1915, something like that. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so he made all his money here and went to New York and spent it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Single backwards. But Whoops. So this is a, is a stairway between where the, the sixth, seventh, eighth graders would go and the upperclassmen would be here. If you look up, you can see a skylight can't see it very well at night, but that's about 20 mm. feet up. And it's the source of a lot of the problems uh, because you can see there are no supports around here. 
and they're the walls around it none of these are weight bearing walls they're all just floating right. on the floor uh, <laughs> below us so over time that skylight started to sink and instead of having a flat the roof now it's a yeah, water collection heavy device. and all the water and, and all that three yeah. years ago before that got fixed this would just get inundated with water when it <clears throat> when it rained um when so they put the in those walls yeah. uh, they the stairs that were on went up about six inches um, well, used to be that you could stick your hand all the way in this crack here that got healed mm. um, and so now the when it rains this is no longer wet there's still wet spots but this isn't one of them and that's cool and i can imagine if i'm a senior here better. that i'm standing here beside the stairway when the sophomore and junior and senior girls got up and down steps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm owning that Naughty, naughty. So this would be where the upper class can hang out. You can see it's a, it's a, it's a huge room. It's a beautiful place. This is skylight. Uh, another classroom here. And you can see how big the classrooms are. Mm -hmm. The ceiling is at about 13 mm -hmm. feet up there, um, which is again why they had that forced air heat. And you can't yeah, see the ceilings are huge. Back when Goldfield was a mining town, you'd be able to see probably 30, maybe 40 mining shafts from here out there. And with 25,000 people, you see gunfights, you see hookers, you see all kinds of stuff. You see shyster That's wolves. a wild stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I love the window. to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> you see love the window. Learned a lot in school so just like looking out the window because like, what the Probably, hell? Uh, seniors. Dang! Uh, up here. Someone we just got, got marked wood, again. Wood, and they're falling apart quickly. Mm. Another classroom. Again, a lot of distractions. If the teacher's up here in the front talking to me about algebra, I'm looking that way. I'm looking at the, the, the mining and the, the TNT and the dynamite, and I'm looking that way. Anyway, it's a beautiful room, beautiful classroom. Right. Love the windows. <clears throat> we don't know what this room was. There's one small chalkboard over there, a lot of windows. Um, we think maybe it was a study hall, where if you're, mm. if you're yeah, a senior, right. junior, senior, Homework's done, your grades are good, you can come sit out here and read a book. Uh, we don't know that because no one wrote down what this room is for, but mm. it was not a classroom. And it's a beautiful sunny room. There, there are five windows just in this in small room that's about 10 by, by 30, and it's isolated from the rest of the building. If you look behind you, you look at this door jam here, Class of 1942, juniors 1941. There's uh, Blanche Parker and Francis Crane and John Clark, 42. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is crazy. Right here, too. And they're all in pencil because the first ballpoint pen in the United States was in the late 40s. Huh. Good thing I brought so my So someone wrote, wrote the name of the year 1931 <laughs> and it's written in pen. You know, yeah. you know, it's yeah. baloney. It's but you think 35. probably half to two thirds of the guys who signed this door jam wound up going to World War II. Oh, yeah. And probably a third of them mm. died. And I'd say almost all the people that signed it are now dead. Oh, undoubtedly, yeah. Most likely so at this point, yeah. If he's, yeah. if he's a senior. Yeah. If he's a senior in 1942, that means he was born in, uh, in 24. So he would be 100 years old now. So undoubtedly, these mm -hmm. people are all dead. And that's 42. That's relatively late. So these guys would be a year older than that. Um, there's some signatures in here from the 30s. There was a guy <coughs> here last summer who found both his grandma and his grandpa's signature on the walls in here. Oh. That would be really cool. <laughs> if, I, if I could find that in my, my grandparents' uh, high school, I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm worshiping that spot. That's, that's really a hell of a piece of history, yeah. I'm not generally a fan of graffiti, but it's like if I were to, 
go back and talk to this teacher who is undoubtedly female and oh, say, yeah. why don't you have all of the seniors sign your door jam or sign something in here? Because, because 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years later, we're going to want to see that. And it's really cool. I'm glad you did that. It is. I mean, that, you could take that and just put it in the museum right You're, there. Probably only the, her favorites would be allowed to sign that. Yeah. Mm. So, and, and that's too bad, but you know, I probably the, uh, they might have only been five or six students. The high grade there. ones, so, the, hey, uh, why don't you guys sign my book? It's, 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 it's a huge I, class. I, I the yeah. right that's now, a huge but, yeah, class. Yeah, the, the kids with the highest grades, etc. So, this is all on the, on the top floor, and again, this huge area with the stairway in it and the skylight. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful place, and you can imagine these walls would be plaster. Um, and if you, all the laughing has been stripped off, but if you look at a wall like this over here and you see how many strips of wood there are before they put plaster, every time one of those pieces of wood crosses a stud, you have nails. Sometimes you have two or, or three nails in that. And you look at all of the nails that are here and then you look up and you look at all the nails up there and you think, if I have to go to work on Monday and my whole job is pounding nails over my head, I'm calling it <laughs> sick. I am not going to do that. And that many nails too? Yeah, there's no ka chunk ka -chunk nail gun. It's like yeah. you have a, yeah. a leather bag and a hammer and you're pounding these nails that are probably about as long as your, your fingers are thick. This is an auditorium lunch room. There's no kitchen here, so everybody had to bring their own lunch. This would be where they would come and eat. Um, a little stage here, I'm guessing, for Christmas programs or Easter programs or something like that. Something like um, that. Yeah. This is an adjoining classroom, but you can see the, the walls are made to have glass in them. So we're thinking maybe if there was a program going on, uh, parents could come and watch the program Ooh, from that classroom uh, through the yeah. glass. These cables are on the floor because the president of the historical society doesn't yet trust the wall i talked to him once a year i say hey john can we take those cables out and he says i wouldn't be able to sleep for a month once those cables are gone <laughs> so he's it's very superstitious the wall is up and the wall is good and the cables are still here so I don't trip over them <laughs> Not like plan. yeah so this is uh, the biggest room in the building by a long way is the ceiling is about 15 feet up and that light is atrocious so if someone wants to come and steal that light I'll open the gate <laughs> it's like George Jetson to me get the dang uh, thing out of here significant from here is this is the attic and you can see there's not much wood up there you wonder what's holding this whole building up this is the main beam and it's five one by 14s that are nailed together and that runs the entire length of width of the building. And there are three of those that hold up the entire building, and that is it. And you <laughs> wonder why it hasn't fallen down yet. That's why it is. So, so this is, yeah, so this is now a weight bearing wall, which cuts the span by about 80 feet. <clears throat> so, and it's got new, it's got new wood alongside it. Anyway. All that had to happen before a new roof comes on. So when you look up there, it's, it's amazing how much wood is not there. And you wonder how the ceiling stays up. We're, I'm in a rock hounding group. And there was a 20-year-old uh, single guy in our group who was invincible, immortal, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I brought That's him up to this point And I said, hey, Seth, I'll give you 100 bucks if you, if you sleep here. I'll come pick you up in the morning. He says, old man, you're wasting your money, but I'm in. So we went down to his car uh -huh. and, and brought up his, um, we we're on a rock hounding trip that was coming through town. And so he brought up his sleeping bag and his, his cook stove and his, his dinner and all that. He's got his stuff out and um, he's making dinner. And I'll, Seth, I'll see you in the morning, right? They come back an hour later and he's sleeping in his car <laughs> in the street. <laughs> So I didn't do anything, I didn't say anything, um, but the next morning, hey Seth, what happened? He said, well, he was laying here making his lunch, making his dinner, having a good time, enjoying his hundred dollars I'm gonna give him the next morning. And he, he, there's a party over there at the bar that you can see through that window. So he gets up and he looks to see what's going on. The bar's dark, there's no party over there. 
So he's kind of jaded, kind of freaks a little bit. So he comes down, lays down, he's making his dinner, and, and now there's a party up in the attic. And they're talking about, look, I can see him from over here. Come on over here, I can see him over here. And there's footsteps. So he loses it. He gets up, he leaves his sleeping bag, he leaves his lunch. I think he turned off his stove, which is a good thing. And he, he's getting out of here, but the, the ground floor door is locked from the outside. So we has to go uh-huh. all the way down to the basement where we first came in in order to get out. <laughs> and everybody knows when something's chasing you, you can't run and you can't turn around, right? All you can do is just, is just go. So I think I owe him two years of his life. <laughs> not, I didn't have to give him 100 bucks, but he's not the same guy he was the day before. Anyway, I don't know what happened. Hey, little that. slave, it's a humble pie. Anyway, anyway. Is it, is it, he Something here got him good. I like being in here at night. Yeah. And I don't blame I him. get it. There's a, a flue on the wall here. So this is one of the last rooms they used when they shut down the furnace <clears> overall. <throat> so there was a, a coal stove in here that they could still use this room. You see all the glass and you see... A huge amount of the valley from here. It's a beautiful room, very sunny. Mm-hmm. And this is another teacher's lounge. <clears throat> it's another bathroom, but there's no no waterfall toilet in there. Damn it. Uh, behind you on the no wall, it looks like toilets. there's an outline of a clock. There's a bundle of wires in mm. all the same color. Wow. It's like if you want to piss off an electrician, Make a bundle yeah. of 20 wires that are all the same color. It's like, no, that's Hank, incredible. that's not it. Keep trying. But we think maybe it was an oh, intercom where if you want to make a general announcement, um, there's also yeah. a switch there that is four switches, probably for first, second, third floor, and all the floors there. Um, and this outlet here is very interesting. Just a ding mess. I wonder what the purpose of that would be. It looks original. It's got original wiring. This uh, this switch is uh, you know dates out to 1920 maybe. I'm thinking mm. somebody have a desk here and that's your desk light, or right. you forgot your homework. <laughs> for a wall socket, buddy. I don't know. Oh. A fire escape that's long gone. There's no no stairs outside of there. No this is the principal's right office, now. and there's a gateway to the attic if you're brave enough that you want to go up there and, and uh, uh, see up there. There is a, uh, a water tank we can see from another place. There's a door behind you um, that is a closet. <clears throat> it's been said that there was uh, the principal had a, uh, one of the students in here was disciplining them and had them locked in that closet. The dad, who was a minor, found out about it, walked off the job site, and came here and had an a, a, a interaction interaction with the principal. And the minor wound up dying from that, which is an odd thing, because if you're betting on a hard rock minor or a desk job principal, my money's mm. 10 to 1 on the minor, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. so, I don't know if there's a weapon involved. I don't know if there's infectious disease involved. I don't know any of that, but maybe Guido's involved somehow. I don't know, but <laughs> that's the story is the dad wound up dying from that. <clears throat> Kid got out and dad died. And, and uh, it's, it's a sad thing all the way around, but if you want to go up later and take pictures of the, of the attic, you can. It's amazing how big it is. It's 20 feet high and it's immense with almost no wood there. <clears throat> And the view from here is fantastic. One other thing to think about, all these doors have two hinges on them, right? Mm-hmm. But look at the principal's office. Oh, God. There's four hinges. It's built like a bank. Seriously. What's, mm. <laughs> what's with that? A little bit odd, yeah. Anyway, no one, no one wrote that down, so we don't know, but... I just wonder why there are four hands on wonder. that door. Principal all, the rest, of, all the, the rest of the doors apparently the killed door the man. Too. So we're back in the in the uh, third floor um, vestibule, I guess. The main street is there, and this is a big a big uh, clearing area. I was here um, last summer 
and there was someone at the front, I was here working in the daytime, and there was someone out on the street that I needed to talk to. So someone had left a couple of uh, pool balls here. There was a yellow one that I think is a nine and a blue one that I think is a two. Anyway, there was one sitting on that post and one sitting on that post. They'd been around for months. They're not here anymore, but <clears throat> I decided I need to go talk to whoever's out there in the street, and I took off my hat and I set it on the yellow ball that was on that post. The blue balls, oh, no, I set them on, on, there was two balls on that post. Put my hat on both the, both the pool balls. Went down and talked to him um, out there on the street. I came back and one of the balls is here. I pick up my hat, there's only one ball under my hat. Hmm. The other one is on the other post. Unfortunately, hmm. I have a security camera right there, right? They could see that, but my yeah. cameras only run at night. So oh. <laughs> I didn't get whatever happened. I would love to know if, I, if I'm just crazy and I remember wrong, or if you'd be able to see the ball move, or you'd see what's moving the ball, or it just kind of disappears and reappears. I don't know. <laughs> but it really bugs me. It's, it's like that camera could have seen everything, but they only Yeah, it could have seen everything, it but it wasn't on that time. Oh, that's, that's always how it goes. Just, ah. Uh, cameras are off. That's when off. Weird shit really happens. Every yeah. time. Second camera's turn on. The ten paranormals still kicking themselves for missing uh, <laughs> recording that uh, giant coyote. Well, that's the high school. What's the most common like paranormal activity that happens here? There was someone here. Um, this is about four years ago now. There was somebody in here at, at night <clears throat> posting pictures of themselves on Facebook. Uh, it's about eleven o'clock at night. So Jerry, who's on Facebook, <clears throat> called me and said, hey, "There's somebody in the high school. You got to go see what's going on." So I get my tools and my lights and all that and my dog and <clears throat> I come over here and I get to the basement door. It's like, there's no way I'm going in there at midnight, especially if I know something's going on. So I went back and I came back in the morning <clears throat> and I found the, the break in the girl's bathroom where someone had come in and I'm in the process of repairing that. <clears throat> and my dog, who's always with me, except right now, he doesn't like the building anymore, um, <clears throat> was with me. Why? And about halfway through my repair job, he gets up and he walks over to the front door and he's laying there and I can't, he won't go anywhere um, <clears throat> until, is there someone back there? He hear noises back there. Thank anyway, you. that's why I wear earplugs when I'm here. <laughs> so my Dead dog got up and, and left. I finished the repair and then I picked up all my tools and left. But I thought it was odd that my dog, Tucker, wouldn't, wouldn't hang out with me. <clears throat> that night there was a, a, a group came in, the paranormal uh, stuff. And, 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 uh, Loud as hell. somebody had a music box, <clears throat> which was new to me. I'd never seen a music box before that was sitting in the room. And I came in the, in the girl's bathroom and I sat down on the floor and there's this thing on the floor that's playing with the light and the, and the, the rotating drum. And that's what a music box is. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen one. So I asked around, what does this thing do? And they explained to me, it puts out its own, its own field when it detects something moving in the field, it, it, it plays. Well, I'm sitting here for five, six, seven, eight minutes and it's not stopped playing. And I'm thinking, you know, what's going on? <clears throat> I said, okay, if, if whatever is making this music box play is what, if you're what made Tucker leave this morning when I was working on the bathroom, then then stop playing. And it stopped playing. Okay, I'm into coincidences. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the game with you. <clears throat> If you want me to go get Tucker and bring him back in, play one note. <laughs> sure enough, the ping, the light flicked. I'd never seen one before. <laughs> I didn't even know they could do that. And so, okay, now there's a lot of big eyes in the room. It's like, okay, I will go get Tucker if you play two notes. Sure enough, it play two notes. Ping, ping. And okay, I'm, now I'm on the hook. I got to go get my dog. <laughs> my dog is sitting by the front door again, and he wants absolutely nothing to do with me, nothing to do with the high school. He wants out of here. Poor I'm thinking puppy. I'm not going to beat him. I'm not going to tie him up. I'm right. not going to carry him. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to go put him in my truck and let him out of his misery, right? So I put him away, and I came back in, and I said, I'm sorry, whoever, whatever you are, Tucker, I can't get Tucker to come back in here. And that's too bad. I apologize. It played about five seconds and turned off and it didn't play the rest of the night. And I don't know what was in the room, but whatever it was, my dog didn't like it and he wouldn't go. He still won't go the back. The dog was spooked by it, but he just wanted to pet the puppy. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, and that was my, like any other kid, my, you want to pet the dog? My coming out with the music dog. box is my coming out Nothing with the bad. high school. Just want to pet the dog. Is my coming out with the group. The dog's probably spooked so as hell because it's got a, a bunch of invisible hands and, trying to pet and it. And things are boring. <clears throat> no one's getting any, no fish are biting. I came here and I said um, at the top of the stairway, just imagine 400 students in here coming up and down and, you know, talking about the football game or whatever. And, and I just enjoy that very positive energy that's here. And I think it's always here even in the daytime. But the reason I wear earplugs is because I don't want to know anything more about it. I just want to feel it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want any of that because 99% of the time when I'm in here, I'm here by myself. I don't want an apparition. I don't want somebody tapping me on the shoulder. I don't want any of that. I you need like, a blindfold too. I so you like really energy. don't see anything. Get some blinders. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's me. Well, that's the high school. Awesome. Uh, I'm ready to investigate. So right you to come and go as you please. So after getting a grasp of the building's history, we decided it was time to investigate. Lost up. So we decided we we're going to set up at the top of the stairs on that landing right there, so we could listen because this building is notorious for the poltergeist activity, the noises, the bumps, the door slam, the people running. And we felt like if we were there at the big open portion of the school, we'd be able to hear it all. About 50 minutes. And we did hear it. We heard a lot of it. And as time went on, it got scarier and scarier because as you'll see in this video, we didn't know if we were talking to that good, happy children's energy or that dark thing that wants to Both. drive people to hurt themselves. Both. Get ready. They're all there. Uh, this one is spooky. Both time. Okay, guys, so we're here Doesn't in Goldfield, Nevada. So now, Connor, <laughs> so we're only a few blocks away from the Goldfield Hotel. So if you watch Ghost Adventures, you will know that the very first episode of Ghost Adventures, actually was a documentary, was filmed just two blocks from here. And they actually have artifacts from that hotel here inside of this high school building. That's uh, super interesting to me. But on the Paranormal Files, for you longtime viewers, the very first episode of this show was filmed at my high school back in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, crazy haunted. I have a theory that, okay, I'll explain it for a second. So what I feel like when it comes to high schools is that almost every school is haunted to a degree. Now, my high too. school never had anybody die in the high school. This building never had anybody actually die in here. But my theory that I've developed for years now is that when kids are in the school buildings, they are going through so much when they're young. They are going through depression, anxiety. I know what I went through. I was very anxious, very depressed in high school. I went through a lot. Um, I wasn't happy with myself. I had acne. I didn't like the way I looked. Just a lot of self-doubt. And obviously there are kids who are young. They take their own lives. They're bullied. There's just a lot of, of angst and just bad emotions that come from people that are in high school in a situation like that. I mean, just think well, about it. They're there every single the, the day. The and kids are feeling somehow. those emotions. They're expressing them. They're being bullied. They're feeling depressed. I feel like all of those emotions create some sort of an energy form, and it's it's not always a good. I would also thing, argue there's a lot you know of I mean. possible extra. Now we've heard that this place, place from like this. the people that manage. I would argue there's a lot of extra negativity in a place like this because back in the day, um, punishments were a little more extreme, um, almost like how punishments used to be in the UK for schools, where they would literally like have a rain crop or something and smack the kids like over the desk and stuff and punish them like very severely obviously in the last like six years or so years that tamed down a bit but it's still something that they had to work on until very recently where they would still have some pretty harsh punishments over there America stopped doing that a long time ago like I would assume after the world wars that kind of severity cut off pretty harshly very quickly but anyway good you wing oh, i clicked the wrong thing it one. is a good place but we also have friends that have come here and said that this place has a bit of a darker energy and i know that in my own high school it was not good energy and uh 
if you guys have seen that episode, the very first video on this channel, Probably you know that we were scared shitless and that there were a number of janitors like. who actually quit the job on the spot because of what they saw in my high school. So it's interesting. Mm. We we actually haven't really done. I don't think we've ever done high school, high school, school since them. the very We're first episode a lot of, of the show. So in this town, though. I'm I'm really excited. This brings me back to the very beginnings of my paranormal career. And it's a weird full circle moment to think of where we came from to where we are now. But yeah, Connor, how are you feeling, buddy? What's like a car? I want to go investigate real, my, first, uh, my first my um, first encounter. I mean, just walking around this building, uh, Steve, the guy who manages the property, he doesn't walk around this place without earbuds in because there's so much audible activity that happens in here uh and he doesn't like that so he will walk around with earbuds even during the interview as you guys can see multiple times for me and colin are hearing noises all around us yeah i noticed and, that and he ignores it yeah he won't acknowledge it yeah. because he doesn't like that <laughs> that's that's funny because i was gonna say that to you that he we made the like we're looking at each other and it kept happening and he, and he didn't say anything it was loud enough noises mm -hmm. where i'm like like i want to go like check this out yeah like right. walking into another room yes and he just keeps talking yes i panned over to you multiple yeah. times like this and he he he, he, just he, he, he ignored it just i'm going. like you do realize what's happening here right yeah. <laughs> But nope, um, he doesn't want to. I think locations Cold like shoulder. schools, prisons, asylums, things like where you have so many people coming in and out of a building like this. Uh, but especially with places that are involving children. I mean, your years as a child that you have are so impressionable. And you go through so many different emotions, and it's a very forming time in your life. Uh, if you go off of the residual energy theory of you living your life, and your life form kind of will leave an energy behind in a place, I think if anywhere would have that energy left over, it would be in a very formidable time in your life, like school. I mean, this was kindergarten to high school in this building we are going to get point, our gear yeah. set up right now like i said we're super excited we were hearing like connor said all those noises during the actual interview and normally we'd stop but yeah it seemed like he didn't he didn't want to acknowledge it because he's in here alone all the time so that's i think for some people scary to actually kind of confront it and say oh it is happening right here time to go back to school baby Ooh. School's in for fall. Students, <laughs> it's time for class. Lesson 101 on haunting. <laughs> yeah. Play that again. Let's get our stuff set up. That was loud. Yeah, that was right. loud. I'm gonna cut. Okay, so we just set up. Oh, you hear it? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck, let's get our stuff set up. <laughs> that was loud. Yeah, that was right. loud. I'm gonna cut. Okay, so we just set everything up upstairs, and as you can hear, somebody set off the music box. Which is a little eerie. Ooh. I just heard a voice from upstairs. Okay, we're gonna reset this. All right, everybody. School's in session. We're here tonight to just talk to you guys, whoever you are or whatever you are. I want to introduce ourselves. My name is Mr. Brown, your new teacher tonight. And I'm Mr. Shannon. So. Fair enough. Old enough to be a teacher, I suppose, especially back then. I want to know, 
Who's here with us right now? Ooh, that was loud. Is that talking or movement? Either way, it's constantly going. If you're here, could you knock back to me? <laughs> Heard that. Mm, it's so I want to hear you guys. Go into your classrooms. Might be the wind, though. It's hard to say. Could you do that? Something blowing around in there. One of the rooms. If Class the is in session. I lie to you. Hmm? <gasps> I said go to the classrooms. Ten spirits. Ten spirits. Yo. Can you tell me or make a noise if this is a senior in high school? Okay. Ooh. Seems like you're right Again, it's here. it's hard to say. I want to say it might be the wind, but it's also very loud and not constant. Weapon? Is that talking about the principal right here? Who killed the, the, the miner? I killed the dad. Well, yeah, the miner who was a dad. <laughs> What the fuck? As soon as he sits down, it's You can step away from the door. Okay, thank you for showing us that you're right here. Someone's right here right now. There's many of us. Oh. Is this a student that we're talking to? We want to stop. Again, hard to say if those noises are legit spirits or just the wind because it's a very Okay, so out there. we know that you're with us right now. Am I dead? <laughs> That's a hell loaded question. Could you possibly tell us what your name is? I've been here 500 years. Yo, I don't know about that. Are you a demon? That might explain the negativity. Just happened to bug itself in here. Find my grave. Hmm. Were you murdered by some? Names apparently. Debra. Nine spirits. What the f? It said what ten. To the nine. Debra. Up to the one. Are you here? Don't leave me. Don't hug Is me. It? I'm scared. Ten to nine spirits. Yeah, one left. Don't leave me. Close. Where are you right now? We want to come talk to you. That was loud.
Again, I'm, I don't want to be like a naysayer, but it's hard to say for sure if those noises are legit or not when there's so many missing windows still. Debra, Donna, would say did you I'd go to school leave it a little here? Bit more if it was like if you really did, close can you make no another wind. noise? Red. Like you, you can tell when there's wind passing through that what area when you uh, call him because of his big hair. Donna, but red reception. They're not in the room, so it's hard to say. What do you mean by that? You want the red light? Whistle. I was in the middle of a yawn. I didn't hear that. They don't play it. I'll overplay it. Whistle. Light? Whistle. I heard something. Not sure what it was. Holy shit, that was close and very loud. Ah, oh! Ah, oh! What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck was that? Close to me. The noise was me. No! No! The noise was me. Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. Mm. It sounded like a what? A door slam? Yeah. Darn near. Plug? I don't know. Dude, what is going on with this thing? I've never seen this go so crazy. Thank you, Donna. I just wanna the gate's locked. Not that your heart's back in your chest. <laughs> I mean at the same time it's one in the morning. On a Sunday? <laughs> well, yeah, no one's here. Why would someone be here? Oh. 1950s. Mm. Oh! Mm. That's when this place closed. Just oh, before. Shit. 2000s. It is now. 2000s. How weird is that? That was loud. Okay, you guys. Obviously, there are students or people in here. Can you tell us more about yourself? Someone's walking around. Yeah, almost, that almost sounds like a legit voice this time. Okay, class is in session. Math class, science class, history class. Uncle. Uncle? Hmm. Fall. Oh, it fall. was the first day of <clears throat> fall like yesterday. Oh. You're hearing those voices, right? Yeah, what Something is whispery sounded over there. I mean, but again, I can't tell you for, say for sure or take it too completely seriously with all the other noise that might be coming from the wind. Who are we speaking to right now? I'll I would require all the windows to be Raymond. working and the ceiling to be, the roof to be Raymond. fixed before I trust all yes. the whispery, hissy sounds. Yeah, that way you know they're actually being properly Excuse blocked from outside. Raymond, it's great to have you here with us. That being said, it shouldn't be that noisy at one o'clock in the morning We're just here either, to see that you're here. You want to play a game or noise. something? We could skip class together. I don't mean harm. Yeah, we don't think that you do, Raymond. We're mm -hmm. just trying to hang out. We're not scared. I died in my sleep. Uh. The answers here are like rapid fire. Mm -hmm. Raymond, could you tell us where we should go? Children. Children. The basement. Downstairs. Mm. If you want us to go downstairs, could you make a loud noise down there? Like maybe move something again or bang something? We heard the door move down there. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Scroll. Scroll. It's a text scroll. Girlfriend. Raymond, are you looking for your girlfriend? Oh. 
That was loud. We are listening. That was very loud. <laughs> We're listening too. Oh. Should we go downstairs? That was very loud again, yeah. That sounded more like a knock. Something had to have fallen off in order to make something that loud. Should we go to the basement? Vessel. The children are listening. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Class is going to be in session in the basement. Why don't you all follow us down there? Dude, there's f somebody waiting for us down there. Quite okay, if you're down there, again, totally can sure. you answer this knock? <gasps> okay, okay. Yeah, that's... That's legit. I think we gotta go down. You're shaving a haircut and now you're going yeah. down there with two bits. Oh. Street. <laughs> that was loud and a definite reply. Hello? I want to make sure no one broke in here. There we go. Dog. Oh, another you who? Dog. It, it still wants to set the dog. These fucking noises are everywhere. I know. All right, we're going to go downstairs. Can all the students follow us down there? I'll pet the dog. I'll pet the dog. So at this point, all these noises that we're hearing, <coughs> the door slamming, the bang, the knocking, it's all <coughs> coming from downstairs. Unfortunately, that's where a lot of the, mm. uh, the strong, scary energy is. Remember, the boys' bathroom is like a mm. scary place. Bang. <gasps> <laughs> Okay. They're waiting. So, yeah, we're gonna head downstairs and now. Get out. Good luck to us. So. Good luck, boys. The spirits, it almost seemed like they were just running around us. <laughs> I mean, knocking noises and banging noises everywhere. It is an old building, so I mean, we yeah. don't know what it might have been. If it would have just been that the building's old or just so the there's wind a lot outside, of but in it there. was still terrifying. But then we decided to go downstairs so we could try out some experiments. I mean, the okay, so we just here set up down here cut. in the classroom, and this REM pod is already going crazy. Obviously, we missed it starting to go off because we weren't <laughs> set up yet, but All thank right. you so much. I think this might have been where you wanted us to come back to. All right, students. Class is in session. My name is Mr. Browen. Jeez. AKA Dr. Spooky. Okay, it was Hear that? Well, I mean, this is the basement. This should be a lot less noise than I, th I th Today, think so. We're going to be learning about history. History can be fun, students, if you let it be fun. Indeed. I swear I just heard a woman's voice. <laughs> oh, that was loud. Again, I'm not sure about the wind. Get in here. You're late for class.
That sounds like legit walking. Dude, those are the that sounds like it's like just outside the room. Okay. And I don't see any wind. I'm gonna turn on the spirit box now and see if we can hear their responses to my questions. Dr. Spooky kinda messed up here. Today is not a history day. Today is, I'm sorry. Mass. Jimmy, get in here. You're late for class. There's, I'm it literally sounds like it's box. just about outside the room. Alright. Today we're learning math. Who can answer this question? Two plus two equals. What's the answer to that, students? All right. It's almost you. a jokester. Four. Eight. <laughs> no, it's not eight students. It's there you go. Four. Bingo. Yes, it's four. Good job. Okay, students. Two times two. Equals what? Multiplication. Four. I heard four. I'm going to ask one more question. What is four plus four? There you go. Can someone tell me that? No. 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 Well, you have to add them. Think of one, two, three, four. That was in the room. Eight. Eight. Hurt this time. That nope. noise is right behind me. <laughs> Eight. Okay, Connor, your turn. I'll see. All right, students. Boo! Hey, man. <laughs> Boo! Boom. And we are not going to be learning math anymore. I like the other teacher better. <laughs> Boo hoo! We are going to be learning the alphabet. My name is. Mr. Connor, today we're going to be learning our ABCs. All right. <clears throat> Can you tell me what comes after D in the alphabet? I swear I heard E. I know. <laughs> That's correct. I just said F. Can you yep. tell me what comes after F in the alphabet? Cooking with fire. These kids ain't dummies. Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. Yes, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it's Z. No. And if you answer, Badly again, you're going to detention. No! <laughs> After that, is another smart guy. G. Whoever's out in the hallway needs to come into class right now, or you'll get detention.
Get in here. Hello? Oh. That was a lot of noise Hello? all at once, yeah. <clears throat> and there doesn't seem to be any oh. wind blowing through nearby them, at least that you can tell. Hello? So, that's interesting. What the f***? Hmm. Hello? How are Hello? you? Oh. Again, upstairs. What the f was that? Hmm. Blue ball. Okay, I guess you're not a human. Active. Come on down. Okay, I guess you're not a human. Come on down. Okay, I guess you're not a human. Come on down. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And I think they accidentally put this over the audio. Whoops. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, let's smash that like button and comment that place is dangerous in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So go comment. You can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. Oh, hopefully it didn't lose too much. It's like an object moving. I heard something though. Is the principal that killed somebody in here? What the f Was that you? No. What the f Was that you? Hello? Hello? <clears throat> to be expected in a place like this, actually, I expected more. You did not expect this to feel like this. No. Okay, students. We're going to ask you some questions. Both of your teachers, Dr. Spooky well, and Mr. Well, at Shannon. Least they seem to get that box working better this time because Honor. last time it was literally just picking up. We're going to ask stations. you some math questions. Please solve them. What is one plus what is one? Plus one. On Can you tell me what four minus two is? What's three plus three, students? You guys are going to have detention if you don't quiet down. Where's makeup? Can you tell me what your name is back there? Hmm. What'd you guys bring for lunch today? We don't cook here, so what do you have in your sack?
Can you tell me who your favorite teacher is? Am I going crazy? What? What is one plus one? Can you tell me what one minus two is? Can you tell me what one plus one Almost like a six in the middle of it, yeah. Can you tell me what your name is back there? Hard to say, though. What you guys play for lunch today? We don't cook here, so what do you have in your sack? Can you tell me who your favorite teacher is? Hmm. <laughs> Some weird noises, but nothing for sure. Who, who was that that we just heard? Can you make a noise in here for us? Are so dry, dude. So dry up here, Marco. Do you really want something to say, Polo? <laughs> Polo. Just got so quiet in here. You're really so like complete silence, y'all. After that f session, <laughs> isn't that a little weird? All right, guys. So it's currently almost 3 a.m. We are both really tired. Connor and I both um, had some mm. incredible poltergeist activity already upstairs and down here. I mean the. F footsteps the banging the door slamming crazy immediately right off the bat but applied by to i think that what we're going to do now is an, uh, an estes method session we're going to go to the mm, boys yeah, bathroom the last big one where estes. steve Let's said he see didn't like get. to go in alone and he said he hated it there the woman said she you know or he said that that woman who stayed here couldn't even be in the place for 10 minutes that's where we're going to end our investigation. But I mean, this was incredibly if you're intelligent. The, the spirit box was incredibly is, you're go there, intelligent. Yeah. It seems like there's kids here. See Nothing scary, anything. but still, when you hear loud bang, you hear loud footsteps and door slamming, you get a little freaked out, right? Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Should we go to the boys' bathroom? So obviously, while, yeah. talking to the spirits mm. of school children and high schoolers, teachers Dico? was the fun. Connor and I were question. laughing. We were trying to do lessons and see if doing that would up the activity, and it did. I mean, there was so much activity that we were recording, and it really seemed like the yeah. spirits were intelligent. But there was also this darkness that was there. There was something lurking in the shadow, something that slammed that door, something that was running across the floor upstairs of the lock building. We had this whole place padlocked and it's got, you know, barbed wire and everything. So there was nobody in there. Mm -hmm. And it really seemed like the good thing was trying to keep us away from the bad. But 
we decided we had to confront this thing face to face and go to that bathroom where people refused to stay in alone to see if we could get that negative energy to tell us exactly what the f I'm happened ready. in that bathroom. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching oh. today's video. <laughs> hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. And this went let's 10 or the video of you guys so much and stay spooky. But uh, since they did their own little effort here, uh, once again, by accident, whoops, audio slip up. Um, link to this video is in the description. If you also want to check out my socials or you want to check out the merch shirt, uh, the merch uh, store with shirts like this one, you can check out the links down below. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe both this and the original video while you're watching it. And with that said, continue. We're now in the boys' Let's restroom go. here in the Goldfield High School. Now, this is where Steve earlier said this is the one room he wouldn't be one in. One room with the weirdest energy in it, for sure. It's upset him without really seeing much of anything, and it spooked somebody who's apparently an expert uh, within 10 minutes. This is where that so woman let's have a look. said she was going to spend the night, and she left after, I think, 10 minutes, an hour. I mean, basically, all of her gear. And all of her stuff. She wouldn't come back till morning. So mm -hmm. there's something negative in this room, and nobody really knows what it is. But Dive that's what we're here right out. now to try and find out. So. This is the real chamber of secrets. I'm on the commode, baby. The porcelain throne. Yeah, I'll feel channel the spirit of someone who has to take a shit. Yeah, it's mommy Myrtle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, guys, I gotta add, Nevada is fucking dry as shit. Anyone who lives here in the state, I empathize with you because my lips are bleeding. I can taste the blood in my mouth just from being here. A couple days. Mm. Buzz. Wisconsin. All right. Want to reintroduce myself down here? My name's Connor. I got the headphones on. This is Colin. Dictionary. We're wanting to talk to whoever's. He hurt me. Whoever's been. This is, this is secret. So I hurt him. He hurt me. So I hurt him. So, mm. why is the entity that's in this bathroom mess messing with so many people? Nicole. Nicole? Ugh, I'm getting already immediately rape, I heard, and he touched me. I don't like mm. that, man. Yeah, I don't like that either. Did You're someone, an idiot! Did someone touch you? Breathe slow. Did you get assaulted in this bathroom? Breathe in the surrounding gloom. Painful. Watch as the light dies. I took it out room. on him. Is this mm. Nicole that I'm talking to? I feel a cold breeze on my neck. I don't know if you're feeling There's that. There's not but a breeze in there. I'm definitely feeling a cold breeze. Which is wild because this is all boarded up. 30. 30. Who are you? I've forgotten. You feel like you've been forgotten in this place? Oh, maybe. We are still here. <laughs> Please remember me. That's the goal. We don't want to lose anybody who's been here. Want to keep this place. He, his, he's John. They're restoring this place so it will be remembered and not lost. Please don't go. <coughs> you too, eh? So this is John? She tickled me. I died in my sleep. So you went to school here? Heart attack. Died in my sleep. Heart attack. Did you go to school here? Look to the left. Don't settle. Emma. Emma. 
So is this Emma or Nicole? Helped me. Did Emma help you? My, o- my only friend. So Emma and Nicole were I'm friends? I'm getting tired. Please don't let him. What happened? Oh, I'm. I'm coming. So why have you been scaring? Get down. Why have you been scaring people that come in here? So many kids. They're all different. There's a bunch of kids in this school still. I don't like the way you've heard me. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people in this school tonight. Just don't let him. Legion. A. Mm-hmm. Oh, better not touch me. So is there someone that was messing with the girls in the school? An older person? Billy. Suffered. So someone suffered in this bathroom? Grace. There's a couple. A couple people suffered in here. I'm really sorry that that happened. Don't tell them! I feel two distinct voices. A young boy and an older man. Who's the older man? He's longing for it. I really don't like the way that you're talking to these children. You look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like mm-hmm. the way you're Not talking to these children at all. Let people know. Please. It's crazy. It's like a kid saying something bad happened to him and someone's trying to shut him up. Quiet! Out. So why are you trying to be all big and bad? I'll beat your ass. You're not going to beat shit. Who are you? If you're going to be all big and bad, you need to tell me your name at least. One, nine, two, three. Person. You going to say something? That's a person. Well, uh, what are you gonna say? Connor there is a bit experienced, so I wonder if they kind of notice on him. Come lick me. No, not gonna do uh, that. No, you must stop. Where up, are you? I've seen your ass already. You saw me walking around? Saw me come by? Biscuits. Here? Why won't you tell stop. me your name? Why can't you tell me your name? I'm getting, I don't know what you're asking, but I'm getting the vibe someone got raped in here. Something I'm bad happened. In here too. Yeah, that's what this it sounds nasty. like. This one's a piece of work. Who did that to you? Negative piece of work that keeps bothering this place. He took the bus. What's your problem? Why do you like to hurt kids? Oh, I just got chill. Yeah. Easy. Do I'm dead it. now. Don't care. You do it because it's easy? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a really pussy move of you. Play it. <gasps> I just got full body chills. You gonna try to do something to scare me? I'll try harder. Wanna touch? Better try your ass off. Come bring it. Yeah, I don't like any of these words. You're gonna try to touch me? I'm certain. You'll hear me. I'm here. By the way, definitely the most dark energy I've felt. He was right about this room. Come on. I miss my rounds. If you're gonna do something, do it. Oh, I died in World War II. Damn. 
Lisa. True. Oh. 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 What? What? Something like f touched my arm, and then I heard a f***ing loud ass bang. I feel, dude, I feel I feel weird like in here. this, dude. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hello! Dang it, yeah, it was on their side, so we won't see it. Piece of work. Might not be <laughs> on the camera. Oh. Bro, that's what I'm talking about. <sighs> oh. What the f was that? It sounded like a fucking chair. That was loud. God, what the fuck? Lock. Lock. I was just gonna ask if someone broke in here. I don't fing like it. Did you hear that? Dude, it feels weird in here. Hmm? Something bad happened in here. Called it a pussy. <laughs> got some better names for it myself. Sure no one broke into this building. And I think uh, a lot of the things I would have to say to it would be a little personal. After everything else I admitted to in here or got ratted out on by. What you hear? Well, it was like, I was calling it out, because I feel like it was, someone got, like, raped or molested. That's how I was feeling. And I was like, calling it out, I'm like, why'd you do it? Like, why are you doing that to children? Like, it was easy. I was like, that's a really pussy move. And then it started going on and on. And then I was like, you gonna make yourself known or what? And it was like, someone went... Do that again. <laughs> and then I heard like, really? That's cool, but also very scary. I fucking like that shit. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna pack up. I'm feeling, yeah. a, little, I'm feeling a little weird. I don't fucking like this, right? Okay. This whole building didn't feel like this. All night, it's gone down. Okay, well she feel real. Uh, this place is a very, very interesting place. I mean, just the city alone of Goldfield. Uh, yeah. It was a booming town at one point, and now it's almost abandoned, pretty much, the whole city. I mean, I think there's maybe less than a thousand people for sure that live there. I'll say at least a few uh, hundred. And so there's not just much. so much that went on in this city. And I mean the high school too. I mean it's a it's a ghost town. Like there's so many spirits that are still left behind in this place that uh I think we were able to talk to that night. Uh definitely an interesting experience uh experience because we did experience some Light-hearted stuff, but then also some really dark stuff at the same time uh, But I will say at the end of the day this place is definitely haunted it's So at the end of the day the Goldfield High School no is very it. haunted You can feel it the moment you step in there in the daytime the history mm -hmm. is amazing and We had a lot of fun, but it was also pretty damn scary That's just how the paranormal is to me because 
No matter what, if something bangs on a door or slams a door shut, throws something at you, you're gonna scream because it's not only surprising, but it's frightening because we don't know exactly what's causing it to happen, who we're talking to, or what it's gonna do next. But I'm super glad that we paid the high school a visit. Goldfield is such a crazy town with so many abandoned buildings out in the middle of the desert. It really was fun to shoot this one and I can't thank you all enough for joining us for another paranormal adventure. But yeah, next week's video is a crazy great video. I love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in and stay spooky. Nevada State Prison next week. Oh, thank you to the viewers. And once again, links down below for the channel, my socials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, both this and the original video in particular. And thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And we will see you all again next time. Pleasant dreams.